Welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Today we're going to transform and upcycle some thrifted decor. I picked up this box sign recently. It says smile on the front and we're not going to keep that on there. That's going to come off, but we're not going to even work on this side. We're going to flip it over and we're going to make kind of a shadow box thing on the inside. So first thing I need to do is take the plastic hanger off and the twine rope hanger and I'm just gonna pull those, that off and I'll be covering that up so I'm not gonna even worry about what it looks like underneath there. I did leave a few staples, but I'm just gonna leave it. Now this is a printout that I created and I wanna use it on this project. Actually, spoiler alert, I'm gonna use it on all three of my projects today, but they're gonna be different and I'm hoping that you're gonna love them. So the first thing I do is I left enough room when I made, when I created this to uh, be able to rip it so that you could have like an organic edge on it and not a straight edge, unless you wanted a straight edge and then you could cut it. But I'm gonna just take a little bit of water on this printer paper, I printed it out on printer paper, and I am just ripping it down to give it a more organic look. So see the edges there. Now the water changed the color of the paper, and I'm thinking it's because of the ink, and I'm okay with it. It kind of looks rustic and cool and vintage, and I'm okay with it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take this diamond hard repurpose paint it's from I got this at tractor supply and it's an ivory color and I'm just painting the back of my paper instead of on the board because I'm not sure because it's such a crazy design and the, the edges are jagged I'm going to just paint the back so that I have a nice bright uh, look to my my paper when I put it down so once that was dry, now I'm taking a coat of Mod Podge and we're gonna put that on there in a nice even coat and then we're gonna add that to the board. So now that I have the coat of Mod Podge on the back, I'm going to place it down on my board where I want it and then just smooth it out with my hands. The good thing with using the printer paper to do the decoupaging is that it's thicker so you don't have to worry about rubbing it too much. Um, at, at first, I mean, of course, you don't want to overwork it, but it um, is easier to to work with for a little bit longer. So I'm just adding some Mod Podge, and I did the edges just a little bit there, the corners, to make sure that they stay down. And I'm just going to do a coat of that all over the top, and then I'll set that aside to let it dry. While that's finishing up drying, I'm going to work on the edges. So I have this uh, ribbon from, I think this came from Timu maybe, uh, and it's a big roll of just some really cool ribbon. And I will try and link it down in the description if I can find it. But I'm gonna use that on this ledge that I have here. Um, it is just the right width for it. And so I'm gonna go all the way around with it. Now the corners, I just give a little fold there and glue it down and just to make it look nice. And I'm gonna go all the way around with some hot glue and just finish that edge off. I'm going to sand it just a little bit and give it a more worn look. I don't think I mentioned it, but this can be purchased as a digital download on my Etsy shop, and there'll be a link down in the description and at the top of the comments. Now I have these cute little scoops. They came from Hobby Lobby. They were having a deal, I think 50% off probably. Two wooden scoops from the His and Hers. They were normally $4.99 and I think I got them for $2.50. Uh, so I bought a couple packages of those because I knew that I'd be able to use them for something. And I decided I was going to paint this guy black. So I took it out, spray painted it black, and now I'm going to sand it down. This was the semi-gloss and 
a lot of you probably know that I like to use the matte paint. So when I sanded it, it kind of it made it more matte. So that was really good. Once I got that done, now I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I want to put this on my little shelf. So I am moving it around and trying to figure it out. Uh, in the meantime, I have made up some little eggs to go in my little scoop. This is going to go, this whole vignette's going to go together here in a minute. Uh, so I'm just taking some uh, DOS clay and I'm creating some little eggs. They're not very good, so don't look too close. Um, they're just, you know, kind of like an egg shape. And uh, so I let those dry for a little while. I did those first thing, but I'm showing them now because then I decided once they were dry that I wanted to give them some paint. I wanted to do the ivory paint because the clay is more of a white paint. So I'm now adding some Spanish moss to my scoop, just gluing that in there so it looks kind of like a little nest and that's where my little my little clay eggs are going to go. Now they're not completely dry so I'm going to be very careful in gluing these in but they're they're getting there. So and just put them in and you won't see them. I mean, you'll know they're there, but you're not gonna see them real well because I will be adding some greenery and a few little flowers in there as well. So it's gonna dress that up really, really good. So I'm just gluing those down and then I'm going to take some greenery from a little sprig that I have and I'm gonna uh, cut a few little of the leaves off and I'm gonna add those to my little scoop. I think that's gonna dress it up really nicely and just go, it's just gonna bring the whole thing together once it's, once it's all done. it's time to put this vignette together so I'm gonna glue this little scoop onto the shelf and I figured out how I want to do it I just got to get the glue in the right spot because evidently I didn't have it right the first time uh, and so I'm just putting it on just like this and then I have a big rusty star that I'm gonna add I think this is gonna look so great with this whole vignette so I'm going to add the glue now that I've decided uh, that's what I'm definitely going to do. So I'm just gluing the tips there. I'm going to put that on and then I'm going to start adding some Spanish moss around the bottom. So that's going to require a little bit of hot glue so that it will stay. And then just sticking it down and burning my fingers, you know, the usual stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm putting it on there and it's sticking to me. <laughs> I have uh, Spanish moss from one end of my kitchen to the other end because my dining room is just off my kitchen. It's just hilarious. I've got to go down and sweep once I get done with this because <laughs> it's everywhere. So now I'm going to add some of that greenery that I added to the little scoop. I'm telling you, it's all going to come together pretty soon here. Uh, and so I added some greenery and I added also some Spanish moss and some greenery on the other side of the scoop. I just didn't show you that in the video. Now I'm taking some antique wax and I'm going around the edges of my printout. Uh, it You can see the, I, don't, I wanted it to blend a little bit more with the uh, the wood that it's sitting on. So I'm just kind of going over it. And then when I sanded it, some of the wrinkles that I sanded, it you know, the paper came through. So I'm just taking some of that antique wax and, and aging that up so you don't have these great big looking uh, kind of rips or tears in the paper. And I think that came out really good. So now I have some of these little daisy flowers. I think these came from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love these tiny little flowers. Um, so I'm going to use three of these on, in my little vignette and we're going to put them in each corner and then I got another one I'm going to put by the star. And then I have some little teeny tiny uh, kind of neutral just like these flowers um, 
they're just teeny little things, but I think they really add a lot to this whole vignette. So these are the ones that I'm going to stick around my eggs and in my little scoop. And, you know, you're still going to see the eggs, like I said, but they'll be a little bit hidden there. So you won't see how terribly I did those eggs. Um, so, and then I'm just going to kind of pop them in, you know, in different spots. And I think it really brought this whole thing together. And I really love how this sign came out. I hope you do too. I sanded down the back and took the smile word off it and added the hanger and this is finished. I love the shape of this thrifted basket that I got and I want to make it look more primitive. So I'm going to go in with my fusion paint in the color mustard. So this is going to be striking, you know, kind of in your face at first, but we'll tone it down. So don't panic. I panicked a little, but then I was like, no, you've done this before. You're okay. This will be fine. <laughs> so I did two coats of this uh, all over the basket. I wanted to make sure that I had everything covered. There was a little bit of a design and, you know, it is white and I will not be distressing back. So I'm going to be using this antique wax just right out of the bottle and I'm going to brush it onto my basket. Of course, I did the two coats and I let it dry first, so it is all dry. Now I'm going to take a rag and wipe it back and look how antiqued, aged, vintage, just look at the awesomeness of this, just adding antique wax. I just absolutely love it. It darkens up that mustard color and takes that bright yellow and tones it down so much and just makes it look so good. So uh, now I'm going to add a liner inside. So I'm just showing you how I do that. I just wrap a piece of my whatever I'm going to use for my liner. And this one's going to be my black and tan material. I use this a lot if you hadn't noticed. I love the black and tan. Um, and I'm just going to put glue underneath the lip and glue in my, my material. So I do that with the material on the outside of the basket. And then once I get it all in, see, I tuck it in just like that. So it gives it a nice hem through the top. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. You could put it in. You could hem it, put it in. I just know that it will fray and I will have strings and it's going to drive me crazy if I don't do it this way. And I just like the finished look of it. So, and it, it doesn't take long at all. So I overlapped it just a little bit. I always make my material a little bit longer than it's supposed to so that it can overlap. And then I go around the edges and make sure that I have it all glued in nicely. So right here I'm showing I have a little bit of a spot where I didn't quite get enough glue. So I just go in and add some glue and then I roll the material up into it so that it leaves that hem across the top and it works really well. I then grabbed a piece of scrap material that I had. I think this is a piece of drop cloth. And I grabbed my coffee tea stain and I spilled it when I opened the lid because I shook it up and it was all inside the lid. Well, now I'm just taking my drop cloth and I'm cleaning it up because that's what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to use it to darken up this material a little bit. 
So it, I cleaned up my little spot that I made the spill with it. And now I'm going to take a brush and just uh, brush it on. And it's going to darken it a little bit. I'll leave a little spot in the middle so you can see how dark it gets once it is dry. And I really like how this looks. Even though it's just going to be a little bit showing, I really like how it looks. So you can see how dark it is here. And so that just makes it look aged. And I really like it. So once that's pretty much dry, it might be a little bit damp, but pretty much dry. I'm taking some Mod Podge and going over the whole piece. I want it all to be covered. And that kind of helps kind of your strings from uh, coming out and from it fraying. Even though I like that, I don't want it to fray anymore. And it also obviously is going to stick down my poultry feed printout that I have that's available on Etsy. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to pop that on there and just just push it down. And, and uh, it didn't feel like it was sticking very good, probably because the material was still a little bit damp. But I wanted to get on with this process. So I did a few other things while I was waiting for it. But, you know, you just kind of want to get it done. <laughs> I couldn't wait to see what it looked like. So I'm taking the Mod Podge and I'm just, just, I'm just putting it all over that, like giving it a bath and Mod Podge. Now, once that's pretty much dry, it, it's almost like a, a sticker on there. It's very cool. So I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to run those all along the edges and add that all over the back of my little patch here. And then I'm going to set that on the basket. And I felt like it needed a little bit more black and tan material on the outside. So I just ripped off a piece of material and I'm going to make a little bow for the top. And I think that brings us all together. I love how it came out. I hope you love it. And we're gonna see the finished product right now. I love this thrifted box that I just got recently, but I'm not real happy with the picture that's on the front. It won't peel off. It's on there really well. So I think what I'm going to do is take my printable that I have and I'm going to put that on the front. It has a little chip in the corner, so I'm just going to take a little bit of antique wax and use that on there to just darken that spot up so it doesn't stand right out. So I added a little wax and like a stain, and then I'm gonna take a, my rag and just wipe it back a little bit. So I think that fixed that little spot really well. Now the top of the box, I decided it had a few little scratches and dings in it, and I started to add the antique wax to that, but I really thought that it would look better if I just did the whole box instead of just a pieces and parts of it. So I just, went over the whole thing with my antique wax and then wiped it back and I think it made it look much better. I did the sides as well. Now I'm going to take my printout and go over the front of my box and get it to fold down over the edge so I know where I want to rip the paper where it's going to land on the front. So I'm just ripping it on uh, all four sides and all the way around and making it a more organic look to it so that it doesn't look so straight and like it 
like kind of like the picture on the front of the box that it looks okay, but I just didn't like the print and the colors in it. So I'm really excited to use my new printout. So I am again painting the back of the paper because I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do the box. So I got one coat on the paper and then I got looking at the box and I said, that's silly, you can just take a little paintbrush and paint this picture. It was so bright, kind of, there was so much going on in this picture. I didn't want it to come through on my printable. So I decided I would do that one, uh, do a coat on that as well. So there's a coat on the paper and a coat on the box. And I added some Mod Podge to the back of the paper and then I just adding it to the front of the box. I think this this way that I did it works out really well. Uh, there's a little bit of the paint that kind of shows through where I ripped it a little bit too much on one corner, but it's okay because I can go back with my antique wax and darken that up and it won't be so bad. So I left this little edge here so that I could just go back and add my Mod Podge because I wanted to make sure I could move it around and stuff where I wanted it. So I'm just adding that down and I'm gonna stick it on there. And then we're gonna let it dry for just a little bit and then we're gonna come back with my sandpaper and sand off this edge. The top and bottom don't need to be sanded because they don't go to the top, all the way to the top or the bottom, but the edges do. So I just sanded those down. I got a little bit of paint there and then I do the other side that I don't think I show you because you don't need to see me sanding both sides. All right, never mind. You're going to see me sanding both sides, evidently. Um, but it's a really easy just downward motion as you do it, and that way it gives it a nice clean sand. I'm now going to add some antique wax to the edges where you can see a little bit of the white from the paper. That way it will blend in with the rest of the box. And it also will get rid of that one little spot that I you could see the, uh, the paint that I had painted on. So I think that worked really well. Just wiped it back with a paper towel. I also did the sides and I decided that I would take the antique wax and paint the sides of the box as well so that it all just matched all together with the lid. I like blending with the antique wax around edges like this to give it a more rustic look, especially when the box is already a stained look. So I just think it looks really great. Now I have a piece of metal that I got. I got a bunch of these from the dump when I was there one day. Somebody had thrown out a bunch of these pieces and this is one of them that I have left over. So I'm just bending the edges where normally a screw or a nail would go in. I think these came from uh, a travel box or a, a trunk that you would have put on a train or something like that. And I think somebody, something must have happened because all the pieces, uh, or a lot of them, were in the metal pile at the dump. So I grabbed them and I said I can absolutely use those for something. I did another video using a bunch of the pieces and I'll link that above. So I'm just taking that and I'm going to use that as my handle on my box because it didn't come with one. And I think, I think it really needs one. And why not a rusty piece of metal to add? to it. <laughs> so uh, because the box is so thin, I can't really put a nail or a screw into it. So I am just using some E6000 and gluing that on.
I hope you guys liked my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite and which one it is. I hope this inspires you to get creative. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and have a great day.